Yeah, so we are live. We are recording. I mean, it's not going live, but I'll probably publish this in the next days. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I am based uh, in Prague. So, uh, yeah. That's where the meetup will be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are actually uh with ludo already uh ludo also known as everyday algonaut uh, algorand maxi can i call you like that i think that's how i <laughs> perceive you algorand maximalist uh, but we can touch this as well ludo uh, schultz uh, active on algorand forum uh, runs several projects in the ecosystem such as votecoin a wallet, uh, Aramid Fina, a bridge, uh, Stabilitas, Asa Gold, Biotech, and many other. Lula is also a winner of several hackathons uh, based in Prague. And uh, yeah, we had a chance to meet uh, in Wrocław when I was organizing Algosphere meetup. And we'll explore everything Algorand with uh, everyday Algonaut. Welcome, Luda. Hello, everybody. My pleasure to to have you here. Definitely, you are super active in the ecosystem. I would like to uh, hear your story and present uh, your story to viewers uh, and the community of Algorand on Jenna Dafka Discomfortu. That will be daily dose of discomfort in English, where we talk great projects like Algorand, great builders like you. And uh, before we actually go digest your projects and the various stuff in the algorithm ecosystem. Uh, maybe let's uh, uh, talk a bit about your background, like uh, maybe what's your story in terms of how did you got into crypto, how did you found Algorand, uh, anything you think is relevant for people to be aware of or you would like to highlight? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I studied uh, the IT at the University of Economics in Prague. And uh, uh, I am very deep in IT. I am basically the, the definition of the full stack. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, so, so I studied uh, and uh, uh, my major was uh, cognitive science. So uh, the news regarding the AI are quite uh, familiar to me, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah. So um, af after the school, I worked at the commodity exchange. Um, we we basically built uh, at the best times. We were like a fourth uh, most liquid uh, commodity exchange in Europe for carbon credits. Later, we did also some trades with uh, technical sold and uh, different stuff. Then I worked for a uh, wooden company. I was uh, arbitrage uh, and market maker trader there and uh, uh, yeah, profitable. <laughs> and uh, it was very good experience. I basically uh, created few few programs for algorithmic trading at, uh, at uh, 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 the major European exchanges. Um, it's, uh, the, it's one of the biggest uh, equity trading uh, companies. For example, they do more than 50% of all trades of Prague stock exchange. So Nice. Yeah. Uh, then... Uh, we started uh, in, in the Budenko, the project of uh, Portu. It was uh, the system for for uh, investment for small investors. 
Uh, then I created for EP commodities uh, uh, the system for the oversight of all prices within all EU regarding the energy. Uh, energy prices, the carbon credits, uh, uh, gas, oil, and uh, and coal and stuff like this. And uh, uh, yeah, it was also very interesting. And uh, uh, yeah, so the, I, I have a very good uh, background in financial markets, in in uh, uh, commodity markets, and uh, uh, I am very deep in technology. So uh, yeah. Yeah. My origins with crypto was uh, somewhere around two, uh, 2012, where I bought like uh, $10 worth of Bitcoin. <laughs> and uh, I tried to do like double spending. I, uh, I did a uh, transaction from one country from the same wallet uh, at the same time as uh, from the other country at the same time. And try to like hack it. <laughs> yeah, of course, I didn't succeed. It. Only one transaction was processed. <laughs> but from these uh, ten dollars, I got like uh, uh, um, I don't know. Right now, it's something like ten thousand dollars. But <laughs> so yeah. that's a good multiplier, ten dollars to ten thousand dollars. I don't ask you how many bitcoins you really have. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, I, 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 I wish I had invested more t back then, but <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, I guess, super hard to stick to the idea of Bitcoin if you found it so early. It was worth nothing. So it, it, if it grew like 10 times or 100 times, then yeah you definitely want to get some profit but uh, it was like uh, uh, so kind of stealth mode or baby mode bitcoin at that time that who who, who could ex who could have expected like what it would eventually become today <laughs> yeah. yeah so those uh, those bitcoin routes are really interesting uh, i'm super happy you were unsuccessful with double spending attack <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh, uh, hey, it was just light. Oh, yeah. I I didn't research it uh, very very much into that, but uh, th th this is really uh, like the origin of the bitcoins that uh, you must not be able to do like double spending. So yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, so also you're like uh, industry okay, like you said commodities, energy prices, market making, carbon credits are like uh, it's a pretty uh, crazy list. I mean diversely so uh, not only technology stack but i'm pretty sure you also tackled many kind of uh, industry specific uh, topics so it's super helpful and some of the things uh, which you... I, I i know all with specifications for example <laughs> so yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, i know i know commodities quite into that for example yeah uh so yes. let, let's continue with the crypto sure and yeah so uh, how how i mean first time yeah, you uh, you've approached algorand uh, maybe yeah also i i didn't run a a, a lot of uh, or a few websites where, where i scrapped like public registries and i published to my, like my websites uh, and i aggregated like multiple data sources into one data source and uh, uh I was like making some money on advertisement, so uh, so the like uh, and I I I tried somehow to monetize uh, this little more, like uh, I will show you for example email if you pay me like one dollar for example, and uh, uh, until I found Algorand, there was no solution basically to do this because. Uh, Oh, oh, yeah! I found Algorand like three or four years ago, and uh, uh, basically now you can show on on the website like j just QR code. Person just sc scan it, sends the payment, uh, 
like the same way as uh, they are used to in mobile banking, like the pay QR code. And uh, uh, it's a really easy way to do. And uh, uh, the Algorand has one of the greatest feature out there that it doesn't fork. So whenever you receive the money, uh, it means that uh, uh, you really received it. Like uh, it will not get lost somewhere where where someone doesn't include it into the block later or something like this. So whenever you receive the assets, uh, you can be one hundred percent sure that the uh, that the uh, uh, you have it on your account and you have access to these assets. So. Uh, I think this is one of the great greatest fe features of Algorand. Uh, it also implies that the the coding is much more much more simpler because, for example, if I would want to accept like a Bitcoin transaction, like a, it would be more complicated because uh, uh, okay, I receive this and I have like uh, twenty confirmations and. Uh, uh, I have to wait for some time, and uh, then what? What if someone uh, for, do the fork, right? And uh, uh, it somehow doesn't get included into the blog, and I have to include it manually, and uh, and it's it's much much more difficult. So, yeah, for uh, for sure, Bitcoin is not good for a small transaction, but with Lightning Network, you can you can do them. So uh, it's also uh, pretty pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, I, I like Algorand, uh, the same same like alternative to the Lightning Network because uh, you have uh, like the the BTC on Algorand, like these wrapped uh, bitcoins on Algorand. There, there are like uh, one from Gomin and one from the Wormhole uh, BTC. Uh, they are basically the BTC, right? Like they keep the value of the BTC and uh, uh, they are in, uh, even in the uh, AMMs and people are doing the arbitrages. So, uh, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it keeps the value and uh, uh, you have all the features of the Algorand, but with Bitcoin, right? And uh, the, Lightning Network, you can send instant tra transaction, but it's not stored anywhere on the um, um, on chain. Like uh, if some server which holds uh, the the Bitcoin goes uh, down because of corrupted hard drive, then uh, your Bitcoins are basically lost. So, yeah. Yeah. For, uh, I mean... Uh, for Bitcoin, I think it, it still has the, the use case as a sort of value, as a digital gold. So uh, obviously uh, uh, for Algorand, I mean, you can you can do much more. There's this programmability, which we, I'm sure we'll, we'll study uh, soon. Uh, with, I mean, you've, you've developed so many projects on top of Algorand. You cannot do that on, on Bitcoin. You can theoretically do that on Ethereum, but Ethereum on layer one is like a too slow, too expensive. Uh, the layer twos uh, are kind of workaround, and even layer twos are not as performant as Algorand on layer one. So I think that that's a big. I mean, for me, that's a big thing that many people don't uh, recognize. That some layer ones like Algorand uh, figure out how to do that properly, thanks to cryptography of people like Silvio Micali. In a way that you don't need a layer two. So I don't. I am not a believer in layer twos. I'm not sure what you think. I mean, I I do believe in layer twos for Bitcoin, which are popping up recently, uh, thanks to BitVM and other stuff. Because I mean, you can extend Bitcoin's programmability and add some feature on top of that. But for Ethereum, you could have done that like in the layer one, uh, like Algorand. So why do you need that? So I mean, uh, how, how, I mean, do, are you following any other like layer two solution on Ethereum? What's your perspective? I mean, will will we ever need layer uh, two for Algorand, or we are good with layer one? Uh, like uh... it is, it, it's quite uh, difficult to def define what is uh, layer two or what is side chain, right? Because uh, for example, on Algorand you cannot fork uh, Algorand, but uh, basically you can run Algorand the uh, private network which you can make uh, uh, public so basically you run 
new algorand uh, chain and it's quite easy to do and uh, this, this way for example we have modified the consensus and uh, we increased the byte length storage for the message fields from these 1000 1, bytes to one, 100 kilobytes and uh, uh, we spin up the aramid uh, aramid network and this aramid network is uh, uh, doing uh, uh, like uh, the Ar Ar Aramid project is uh, the, the bridge between uh, LVM, uh, EVM, NIR, and uh, like uh, multiple basically chains, where uh, on one side uh, it's the multi sig bridge. So basically, uh, all signatures, we call them soldiers, uh, uh, when they uh, they, they run the some black box and uh, when they see the the message on the source network then uh, they sign uh, that uh, the transaction or if they receive through the uh, blockchain the aramid blockchain this signed payload then uh, they they co-sign this uh, payload so uh, yeah, we couldn't, couldn't do this on Algorand uh, back then because uh, uh, the boxes were not implemented yet and uh, the byte, uh, byte length was only 1000 bytes. So we spin up, spin out this, uh, this network where, where we could uh, basically store like these uh, all, all the signator the signatures from all signatures even the message and some metadata and everything and uh, uh, so, so th this is one of the beauties of the algorand that uh, uh, you can uh, run these uh, private networks and the, the, there are use cases for it for example banks can run the, like their own private networks where uh, they they will have it like on multiple uh, uh, multiple server locations and uh, uh, because they run it like algorand software uh, it will never go down because uh, uh, like uh, i'm sure they they can make uh, the servers uh, uh, stable yeah and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so, like, uh, a yeah, private, like private for, for chains, banks, it would be is, great. So. Yeah, yeah. So, private chains is something like what is called this core chain. Is still the idea of of core chain is a private chain, right? It's what you're saying. Yeah, uh, I I uh, I heard that uh, they they came with the idea of core chains, but uh, but uh, it was just uh, some some spin up and uh, the the. Uh, they doesn't want to call these type of chains uh, the co chains because uh, I think they they mean mean something else with this. But uh, yeah, the I think the correct terminology for this type of chain the uh, the same as the VoI chain is uh, and the Arami chain. Uh, it's uh, I think parallel chain or. Okay, oh, so uh, Aramid change? Finance oh, okay. is. A... I, I don't know. <laughs> sure, sure. So, so yeah. just to make sure, Aramid uh, Finance and the Aramid Bridge is like a built as a totally separate network with separate validators. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. It, but, yeah, it runs like decentralized. Anybody can run uh, the, the, the network. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm just checking your website. It's a slant to testnet bridge. So uh, is it a mainnet or is it testnet? Like what's what's the stage? I think it's like a very <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's difficult to define because uh, like uh, we have passed the audits, but we didn't find uh, the finances to to launch to mainnet properly. Uh, but uh, we basically launched to mainnet between the Algorand mainnet and void testnet. <laughs> Because it's AVM to AVM, it's super easy, and uh, 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 so, so we are. And but but we didn't add there yet any any uh, e, uh, uh, Ethereum chains like Ethereum 
uh, and stuff like this. So uh, yeah, we, we have launched the mainnet, but it's not public yet. <laughs> And uh, we have launched this uh, mainnet between between these uh, AVM chains. So uh, and uh, yeah, this is uh, completely separated, but it runs basically everything. This this uh, message payloads runs through the Aramid chain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I see. Like there is a near indeed. Uh, there the the. I don't see a void, but you've already mentioned void. I I, I didn't cover void here uh, on the channel yet. So maybe uh, if uh, if that's indeed a, a breach between our grant and the void, may, maybe you could uh, kind of give an overview what the void network is and like uh, was uh, what potentially use cases you see for void. I mean, purpose of this breach in this context, I think that would be super interesting uh, to, to digest. Yeah, so uh, Voy is basically this uh, other Algorand sidechain. Uh, someone can call it like uh, 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 like uh, AVM has these, uh, these uh, second layer chains. It may be basically the same thing because uh, 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 it runs on the official Algorand uh, software, right? So, uh, yeah. And uh, the idea there is that uh, uh, some people doesn't like uh, probably the distribution of uh, like uh, early Algorand uh, 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 tokens or how to say it and they try to create this uh, as fully fully community uh, chain so uh, they try to enhance that everybody is a community and everybody has a right to receive some voice so everybody who runs this uh, uh, voice uh, voy, uh, participation nodes receives basically for protecting voice network some uh, void tokens. However, the void is not yet in the mainnet. They are still on the testnet. And uh, uh, the the thing that uh, we basically bridge this uh, USDC to void network, they, they have some AMMs there. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's very, and, and uh, also the void is bridged to the uh, Algorand. Uh, everybody can see the price of the void void test token, and uh, th there is going to be some distribution from the void test tokens to the void mainnet tokens, because uh, they try to do everything like uh, uh, the community driven. So it's going to be somehow distributed, and price will probably go down <laughs> because there are going to be like ten billion uh, new algos and. Uh, it's going to be like uh, uh, from the Bitcoin perspective, like when there was like this uh, main Bitcoin, and then there was like this, uh, this, uh, 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 yeah, the Bitcoin uh, Cash, uh, right? Yeah, yeah Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> when when they increase just the the the. Bytes so capable of handling like the transactions, then uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing, I think. Yeah, okay. But... So, I mean, if, uh, from what you're describing for me, then uh, Voy is like a hard fork of the Algorand code repository and uh, relaunched kind of as a new, new network, which is, I think in general is yeah. good because you use the same programming paradigms mm -hmm. uh, you kind of grow the ecosystem uh, in in the new directions especially yeah. if you have a breach i'm not sure if i'm in breach yeah, it's, i it, think uh, it's it's very good because uh, like uh, they are trying to onboard like new users to the avm ecosystem right and uh, uh, like they are not trying just to steal like algorand users uh, but uh, like in the long term, like uh, they will have like some code su suggestions to the algorithm base, and uh, uh, and uh, 
or uh, algorithm technologies will probably develop uh, it more and uh, like uh, the broader community will have like better impact on on this and uh, whenever someone is going to deploy some application for example bridge or whatever uh, then uh, they can do like uh, very easy to to deploy it uh, to multiple chains like on ethereum uh, you can deploy with uh, evm code to to many 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 chains right and uh, the same uh, like when people will start to talk about algorand that okay uh, uh, it has already already many communities and i can deploy to this community this community this community then uh it's uh it's much better i think like yeah uh, yeah Algorand sure. is basically second to Ethereum, but the, where Ethereum wants to be, Algorand is there for the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, Sena says like, uh, like we have this narrative in the uh, previous bull market, and not only, but uh, started more or less than of EVM, so Ethereum virtual machine compatible chains. So right now we have like a first example of AVM, Algorand Virtual Machine Compatible Chains, uh, which I think for overall for the ecosystem is good, attracts more developers, more ideas of applications, you can bridge it and uh, ecosystem as a whole gains attention. So I think it's super, super cool. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I actually, I, I think the voice, the fourth one. <laughs> fourth one. Yeah. So yeah. who who, uh, who was before Voy? Like right. uh, the Aramid was first sidechain to uh, AVM. Then uh, there was like this gaming uh, service. Uh, um, I don't remember at the moment exactly the name, but uh, they, they run it like privately. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then uh, the boy is the fourth uh, AVM sidechain I know. Yeah, so so uh, we we probably need to make a bit more noise around it that we have this <laughs> AVM compatible environments. So, Aramid, and like I I think the bigger speaker for for the voice is Chris. So, uh, if you want to to talk about the void, yeah, just call him for interview. So so yeah, we probably should should arrange it uh, one day. So, I actually wanted Chris to come. Uh, to Wrocław for the Algosphere, uh, didn't uh, no, wasn't possible at that time, but but maybe we will come back to the idea. Uh, but we started uh, with Aramid. So and, um, for, for for the record, I am just a developer. I'm not the, uh, any any governance council or whatever employee. So uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm and just that... a builder. <laughs> You are a great builder, Ludo. And uh, for 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 the Aramid, uh, are are you the developer? Are you like the founder, co-founder of this idea? Like uh, how how does it all started for you with Aramid? Yeah, I I was in a uh, hackathon in in Switzerland, uh, and I I won this hackathon with the uh, decentralized real estate marketplace. Uh, and we received like uh, the the main prize like one hundred thousand dollars, but in ABS credits, <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, th there I met basically uh, Daniel, and Daniel received the grant from from the Algorand Foundation. Uh, it was this super grant the uh, uh, applications for the bridges and. Uh, and uh, AMMs and uh, uh, I don't know what what was there, but uh, yeah. So uh, uh, and they they had already some team, and uh, Daniel onboarded me as a developer to to the team, and at the end uh, I coded uh, uh, basically the most part of the bridge. So uh, so yeah. Okay. This is the story. So, so I am kind of CTO at the moment. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Aramid is bridging Algorand to Voy and uh, possibly other networks in the future, like uh, near AV uh, into virtual machine chains. I'm getting that right. Uh, we, we have already uh, set up the contracts in Ethereum. Uh, 
Polygon, o Aurora, o, o, and, o, o, well, Algorand and, o, and o, Boy. And uh, uh, we have we, uh, some some developers did coding uh, the part for the near part, but uh, this part is at the moment uh, very expensive to run uh, because not near is not as efficient as Algorand. But uh, uh, so, so when we are going to launch pretty soon to the mainnet, hopefully, then. Uh, Oh, uh, this is going to be question if to to launch to near as well because uh, each of uh, each of these soldiers ha has to run uh, these uh, black box application, and uh, uh, basically we optimize the cost because uh, uh, we don't want these uh, soldiers to to run it very expensively, and uh, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, like the if you want to speak uh, about the the Aramid, I think the best uh, person to speak is Daniel, and uh, Daniel okay. will have more. Yeah, more I'm I'm trying yeah. to also, just also the information when 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 we go uh, to to mainnet. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's not up to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but I think it would be great uh, to uh, come back and discuss this again once there is a main net and the, the the solution is is complete. I think Algorand in general needs uh, more bridges so that it's not like a, that much standalone environment. Obviously, Algorand uh, is a great chain, performance chain, no forking, zero downtime. We have mentioned this already. Uh, super fast, super cheap. But the liquidity and the users are kind of in the broader ecosystem as well. So link, linking all this island, I think, uh, is, is a very, very uh, needed. So uh, super bullish on what you are building. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, uh, maybe a bit, uh, because you, you are involved in so many projects, we could probably d discuss uh, you know your a wallet your uh, you know, other projects like uh, vote coin but before we actually go into that uh you're, you're in check uh, right so uh are, are, how big is the developers community in, in czech republic i mean uh, in terms of uh, you know blockchain developers uh, is the community uh, vibrant? Okay. I, I i i was at the binance uh... Binance meetup here in Prague, and they said the statistics of the uh, users per capita, and uh, the 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 hi highest value is basically in Czech Republic. Like so, the the highest concentrated concentration of the blo blockchain users, like the uh, crypto traders and and basically the users is uh, in Czech Republic and Czech Republic is uh, uh, re really this uh, uh, one of the origins of the of the crypto space because for example the uh, for first uh, Bitcoin ATM to my knowledge was run in in in, uh, in the city here uh, so the, the there is uh, Oh, uh, uh, you know, mining pools on Bitcoin, right? <laughs> so it was in invented here as well. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know and, that. And uh, it's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like uh, a lot of uh, companies uh, uh, are based in Czech Republic for this. Okay. But... Okay. Cool. So yeah, uh, like, you. Uh, you 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 are organizing also uh, this uh, meetup in in Prague, right? It's uh, uh, end of May, thirteenth of May. Uh, so, uh, do you expect like many developers to come there, or is like uh, who who is the audience? Was the capacity planned for for this meetup? I mean, it's not far from Poland, so I, I guess many people would be interested to join. But if you could give a feel, if you already know like uh, yeah. agenda uh, and target audience yeah the, the target audience is uh general crypto users it's not the developers 
So uh, it's one, one day before the Eid Prague. So uh, I targeted this day because uh, uh, because uh, I think we need more more people to onboard to our grant, and uh, uh, there will be higher concentration of of uh, Ethereum users uh, uh, in here. So I think uh, uh, it's very good peak like this date because. Uh, yeah, we organized this also with the BeerFi event. Uh, this is group of people who meet uh, every every month uh, and discuss the crypto stuff. And I feel they're uh, like a, a, a solo algorand, but I try to persuade them that algorand is very good and uh, tell them all these features and. Uh, uh, I try to build this uh, community of Algorand users in here. In here, and uh, uh, yeah, I think it it will be quite good event. Like many people will come, and uh, uh, we will sh share our good experience with Algorand them. So, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Do you uh, have like so already like a web? Event? Do you have like a web page for for the event? Something where we can landing page? We can like a. Uh link it under the uh, video for people who like to keep track and attend so i think it's definitely worth doing yeah it's going to be during the prague blockchain weeks and uh, uh basically the the uh, web page i like to link is this uh, algorand forum page uh, because uh, i got this uh, 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 i got some money for, from the algorand foundation or I will get some money from the Algorithm Foundation for uh, organizing this event because uh, I uh, kind of uh, thought that uh, this this is a very good idea to do, and uh, I uh, and Algorithm Foundation is running this uh, exgal uh, grants program, and uh, uh, so so I filled in the application for the grants program. And uh, 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 it got uh, voted by the expert algorand governors, and uh, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, first or second uh, uh, proposals uh, proposal that got passed okay. in the Excel session. So, <laughs> so uh, very good. I mean, was, congratulations. Uh, yeah. So, so I started to organize it uh, pretty soon. So, yeah. It will be fun, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I will try to be there if I'm uh, in Poland at this time. I'll, I'll definitely uh, come to Prague, and uh, people are invited. Uh, probably I will remind everyone before the um, meet up closer to the end of May that it's happening, uh, so that people can schedule accordingly. But if you are interested, uh, already mark the date. Uh, uh, okay, Ludo. So uh, coming back to to your uh, developments and uh, everything Algorand related, uh, right now, I mean, how how easy or how difficult? I mean, you are producing tons of uh, code probably with those uh, projects. So, I mean, do you find it easy to develop an Algorand? Uh, if if not, what are the challenges? We obviously are counting the dates for the official Python launch. I think it's week from now since uh, we record this uh, uh, March 21st. Uh, do you think like a Python will be a, a, a game changer? If yes, no. Uh, if yes, why? If, if no, why? Uh, just kind of what did you get a feel of kind of developer perspective as it is today? And like, uh, what do you expect to change uh, after the Python? Okay, so the developer, uh, I can tell you like developer experience like three years ago yeah. was great <laughs> because uh, like uh, you don't need to be like uh, Web3 developers, Web3 developer to, to build on Algorand because all all APIs, APIs that, that there are like uh, AlgoD and the indexer are basically the Web2 APIs. So uh, if you want just to store some data to the blockchain, you don't need to be like Web3 developers. 
right so uh, uh, from from my perspective like uh, as a let's say web2 developer i uh, i i really think that uh, uh, it was very easy to to start with and uh, late, however it had uh, the, these uh, uh, tricky tricky parts there that if you wanted to build some some smart contracts it was a little more difficult right because uh, uh, back then you had to learn like uh, till language directly it was kind of the assembl assembler language I don't have anything against it because I, I did like uh, before even before I went to the university uh, in the assembler I wrote like this program to to play the the uh, 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 sh uh, ships game I don't know if you know it yeah but the, uh, you you pick the ship and then the opponent goes picks uh, the sh the location on your board and uh, and goes like this and I even created like some random number generator there because uh, because uh, uh, I I played the against the computer right so uh, it, it was it was fun but the uh, uh yeah so uh like uh, i understand really like computers to to to, to the to the depth and uh like uh, uh learning the teal is uh, uh easier than than learning like uh, assembler <laughs> but uh, uh uh yeah it's still not not, not that easy later than then there was like this pi teal and uh, a lot of people started to code in Python, and uh, 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 it, it was much better user experience. Uh, with the Atomics, we wrote this uh, impermanent loss solution for Algorand be between the the Vestige and uh, PacPy, and uh, uh, then then. Oh, oh, yeah! Like uh, a lot of things uh, in my early Algorand careers, I didn't even do like smart contracts because I really didn't need to. Like uh, the Vodcoin project is just the set of JSON schema specifications how you write the data to the uh, to the transaction node field. It's a su super simple and it's scalable basically infinitely. Uh, however, it doesn't count the the votes uh, automatically. So, uh, uh, yeah, but the the idea is that the voting system must be auditable, and uh, uh, like the idea, of, like th this is the core idea of the blockchains that uh, you don't mess with the past data, right? So if, if there is anything stored in the blockchain, it's stored there uh, forever. And if you get uh, like uh, 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 catched in cheating, like uh, this will be your like bad bad, bad mark f forever, basically. So, uh, so uh, yeah, like this transparency and the uh, and the uh, no. Uh, Auditable auditability is basically the core of the uh, vote coin uh, uh, system, and uh, basically the algorithm governance, which was uh, created basically later, <laughs> uh, uh, is using the same system. The governance you just write to the node field uh, the information how you, how you vote. However, the vote coin. Uh, vote coin also create this schema like uh, to ask a question not not just to cast the vote also the vote coin uh, create json schema how to, you can delegate uh, your voting power to someone else also it creates like standard how you can encrypt the voting ballot and uh, um, and only the the person who who asked a question until he reveals the mnemonic of the of the this private key which is encrypted everything with then uh nobody knows like uh, 
uh, who, how uh, uh, voted. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, so uh, I, I think it would coin, be a vote kind of stands like a, a generic framework for everything related to to voting, right? You can. Uh, uh, Get yeah, like... there are open source applications like uh, how, how people count the votes. There are uh, uh, everything is basically open source, even the standard itself. So uh, yeah. yeah, but we started with like the question how how easy or how difficult is like to develop for our grant. You started with with the teal. It uh, was already like uh, easy for you because you are an expert with the pie teal. Again. Um, so I, I understand like I'm asking like, like a, a super techie yeah, yeah. and, and uh, guy, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have a perspective if like a Python is changing anything for you right now, make it easier, faster, or maybe not. Uh, and, and if not for you, that like, uh, do you expect that this can really attract this uh, uh, tens of thousands of developers to the ecosystem? I'm just asking somebody from like the developers community like you on the perspective. Yeah, I, I don't want to break much uh, algorithm marketing, <laughs> but I, I don't like Python very much because of these uh, white, uh, white intending things. I can write like Python, but uh, I, I don't prefer it. <laughs> and uh, 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 the, I, I think that uh, it's very good that uh, uh, very very large uh, um, uh, among like uh, very many people who doesn't do JavaScript, for example, but they can do like Python can can write uh, the smart contracts by themselves. It's going to be like the question if they can do only Python, like uh, how good developers they they are, but uh, um uh, oh uh, yeah i think uh, the what i like the most is uh, is that algorand is trying to do this uh, uh teal script because uh, teal script is very very similar to to solidity and uh, so so it, it, all ethereum developers will not go to the python uh, algorand or P P I or how it's called, uh, but they, they will move to the tail script, and the uh, tail script is uh, super easy, and uh, it's uh, uh, very um, very easy to write in uh, like JavaScript type of things. Also, the word of mention is this uh, reach. Uh, the reach is also JavaScript, basically type of coding, where you create like uh, some uh, entities who can interact with the uh, with with, uh, with assets, and then you can code like uh, uh, this asset uh, can go to this entity on this condition and stuff like this. So the uh, yeah, but uh, this still script is much more. Uh, Closer to the uh, solidity than than reach, but the yeah okay the the reach has also a very good uh, advantage that uh, if you write in reach you can deploy to EVM or AVM or no I think they are trying to add some more chains so the you write just one code then you can deploy to multiple uh, networks okay and. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm getting from this is like a good that we have a teal or teal script for for more kind of techy advanced uh, user developers. We have reach for other purposes, and Python might be possibly good to attract those who are maybe more familiar with uh, Web two paradigms of programming, and that will be easier start into a blockchain. Well, maybe. the 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 issue is that Web two developers are using JavaScript, right? So they, they will uh, incline to use of uh, the tail script more. Uh, but uh, the, the people who doesn't write uh, JavaScript, but they can write uh, Python, 
are usually uh, these, uh, for example, the stati uh, statistics guy, guys, or uh, perhaps uh, new developers that comes out of the college and they just learn for some reason only only Python or they, they like only Python. I don't know. So the uh, yeah, like everybody has some coding preferences. And uh, if I like to write uh, TypeScript more than than Python, then uh, for, for me personally, it's much better to write in TypeScript. Okay, yeah. So the the the, the choice will be and wider, I, and that, that that's good. And uh, yeah, but uh, also I do a lot of things in .NET. <laughs> so so uh, I also like the 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 moves on that front so uh, I, i've seen that uh, you can write like that net code and uh, uh, it basically compares to the algorand uh, algorand uh, smart contract it's it's also a very cool thing and uh, yeah okay okay cool so uh, many programming uh, languages and uh, probably uh, if, if somebody wants to start with blockchain we'll find something uh, like at the gates uh, into the ecosystem uh, and the python thing is like uh, just one of the narratives from the like roadmap big roadmap technical roadmap for our grant release under the umbrella of gambit uh, yeah, yeah, I think this is very wise because uh, that, uh, I believe there is very uh, like a lot of people who doesn't who prefer to write in Python, and uh, uh, some of them doesn't even do like uh, TypeScript or JavaScript, and uh, uh, like uh, these uh, EVM chains or some other chains that. Uh, uh, focus only on uh, Rust, then uh, they uh, like they they are losing the audience. Like not a lot of people write Rust, right? So the, there is much much many more uh, like really many more people who write uh, Python than Rust. So uh, uh, yeah, I think this will be like a uh good uh, good upside uh, upside pressure for the algorithm price because like uh, when people will come and we'll see that uh people uh that is easy to write uh, even smart contracts and uh, when developers come and they will see that uh, you don't have to write even smart contract and you can be like a web3 developers like interact with the blockchain without any uh, smart contracts that's uh, that is really cool so yeah yeah for 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 sure and uh, yeah i'm just looking on various uh, stats and definitely uh, java is number one most often but python is number two in terms of like a popularity of the programming language so I, I think that's just a question of 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 uh, scale so if you uh, reach out to millions of developers and some of them will get interested in our grant uh, some will start programming uh, some of those dApps will eventually go to mainnet then um, i mean the, at some stage uh, you know we get the traction you get the uh, kind of network effect within the ecosystem. Uh, somebody will come up with an innovative uh, idea for a new application. So I think that's in general that's good. So uh, extending the uh, the narrative to much more developers than we have today, and we'll see like the, what what are the uh, fruits in the coming uh, weeks and and months. Uh, that that's my perspective, but Gambit is like uh, much more than like Gambit. So the new roadmap, it's it's Algo Kit 2.0, uh, it's Python, but but there are also some very important changes to the uh, network consensus, the incentivization mechanism. Uh, to uh, we're shifting into new uh, network architecture in general. May maybe we you could. Uh, Tell a bit uh, about uh, what are you most uh, kind of looking forward in terms of the roadmap update. Uh, do you like the uh, I know shifting 
I mean, elimination of the need for relay nodes, going to peer-to-peer -peer gossip network. I mean, just give your, ex you know, I'm not sure if you are not, if you are a node runner, if if you you also work on the infrastructure level, but I would be curious to to get your perspective on 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 this uh, technical part of the roadmap in terms of infrastructure. What's good? What's bad? Yeah. yeah so so um, uh, as I'm a relay node runner uh, in few countries, um, and. Uh, I basically came to Algorand uh, uh, to uh, and and try try to propose them. Okay, please split this archival part of the relay nodes with the networking part of the relay nodes, right? Because th these are basically two absolutely two different things. And uh, I'm very happy that the, the in the last uh, last. Uh, um uh, last the uh, release of the algo d i think it was yesterday or two days ago they they finally uh like uh claim uh, wrote that the it's like uh, fully supported to run the archival uh, archival non-relay node and uh, and stuff like this so uh the, this part is basically uh done and i think this is very good for the algorand ecosystem because you don't need to store all all data or, or the whole blockchain on all computers out there so uh, uh, because uh, these relay nodes or some good participation nodes, which are basically relay nodes in the future, uh, uh, can handle the network traffic. But uh, if you charge uh, or if you require them to run this ter uh, few terabyte drive, the the costs are more more expensive. So uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, fr from the user perspective, I like uh, the changes from the relay node uh, runner. I don't, I, uh, I don't like <laughs> these things, but uh, but uh, like in general, I like uh, these changes. And uh, the the most thing uh, I think that people will appreciate is this change that uh, uh, everybody can protect Algorand network and they will get paid for it. So uh, this consensus incentivization change uh, is uh, good in my opinion. And uh, uh, I have not seen how they uh, implemented it on Void, they are already running it, but uh, but uh, basically they have apps to distribute it, this Void, void as to token to, to people. And uh, uh, they uh, they even measure like uh, how how performant is your uh, uh, consensus node and uh, uh, like uh, benchmark you and give you the void depending on this. So the I I wonder like how, if they are going to do this uh, on the protocol level because for example uh, when I uh, went to the algorand uh, there was this. Uh, this automatic uh, balance increment <laughs> or how to uh, what was it called like when you had like 1000 algos or an account you gained interest like five percent or something like this it was like fully automated by by the protocol mm -hmm. and uh, th th this is what i liked on the algorithm very much and later they they stopped this program and uh, put the money to the governance program and now they are um, stopping the governance uh, rewards and uh, they are putting money to the to the consensus participation so uh, basically if they would uh, do this on the protocol level uh, that if you, your account is online and uh, uh, you get automatically some of these uh, rewards from the rewards pool or something like this uh, th this would be like really super cool but uh, yeah, I, I don't understand why uh, 
why there should be this threshold like 30,000 uh, algos to, to be part of this. But uh, 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 yeah, like I, I think uh, anybody even with an algo should be able to 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 protect the algorithm network. But but well. Yeah, so I mean, maybe because uh, for people who are unaware, the 30k algos was just voted recently as the as the minimal threshold, uh, which I think at this price is uh, okay. It's it's still a lot. Uh, 30, it's like I consider algo to be like one dollar, and uh, it's like thirty thousand dollars. Like, and if algo will go to three dollars, it's like uh, uh, ninety thousand dollars, and who will want to? To have like ninety thousand uh, dollars just having on the account, right? So the it's, yeah. it's strange. Yeah, yeah, but uh, today like it's it's lower, right? So it's seven thousand dollars to to uh, be able. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and you you never know what we all we all wish. Uh, and hope it will be higher in, in the coming. Uh, yeah, like so. uh, if you consider that uh, that. Almost all algorand is op almost uh, in the market, and uh, from two thousand thirty, there will be no no more algorand to be to be uh, or, or all algorand will be distributed. Like uh, in Bitcoin, you have like uh, this this timeline to go to two two thousand one hundred or something like this. But on algorand, it's like now in few years and yeah I mean, uh, on bitcoin uh, inflation like, uh, is already and, and very then, low then, right so it's then, like a two percent it will be one percent on algorand i think right now in the, and we are at the stage when the inflation uh, i mean there's no new algorand introducing into uh I mean, protocol level, everything is already set, but but I think uh, what's being released on average is like a 3% inflation, more or less, right? And we just say by the end of 2030, uh, all algos will be distributed, so inflation will be zero. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we all hope uh, it will mean something for, 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 for the price, but that's just the hope. Uh, so I mean, if anyone is interested, each each quarter or less algo is going to be distributed to the algorand ecosystem. So this three percent that you said that the this current inflation uh, might be even less, but uh, I don't know uh, exact. Yeah, it will be so. decreasing uh, quarter over quarter. So for sure, it, it will be soon close to to uh, zero uh, in terms of inflation uh, and. Uh, yeah, so I mean, from the perspective, if anyone to uh, I mean, run a node, uh, be have an active account and earn participation reward, uh, I, I, that's what I called it in the past, participation in reward, because it was like a, you just hold an algo in the wallet in the past, and it was earning the the reward. It was like a six or eight percent, but but it was like a passive. I, I think for many people. I, it was not stimulating the engagement into the ecosystem. Uh, so uh, I think it was good to start. Uh, that's my opinion F in the first years, just you know, to get people interested. Then Algorand was trying to do something different. So we have this XGov program. But right now, I mean, this shift is not, I, I think it's, uh, it's justified. So I mean, you need you really need to do something. I mean, ra running uh, an online node, and I, I mean, you, you need to be online. You need to use some uh, power. You, you need to keep up probably with some updates. So there will be rewards, and uh, I guess that's my kind of feel. Uh, if you put at stake a bigger amount of money, you are considered serious player. So we will keep keep up with all everything what's going on. Uh, you you basically make sure that that your node is online. Uh, what well, from like a network predictability perspective, having like a tiny players with a ten, ta maybe not ten, ten algos, but thousand algo or five hundred algo who just turn off and turn on the computer. I think it could have could could destabilize the network if we will have too many people with a small algo who are part of them. I don't know, but that that's no, no, no I... the, the, it will destabilize the network if people will run it at home computers. 
but uh, it will not destabilize network if uh, people will run like uh, the server hosting uh, like the the server in real hosting and uh, uh, run the participation server there and uh, uh, even if they would have like uh, 100 algos there and would try to earn like uh, uh, one algo per year it's uh, uh, it's i think it's better than than yeah, yeah but, uh, I, I think you know uh, if 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 you uh, we if should you... showcase the features of the algorand like uh, if uh, the features of the algorand is that anybody can protect the algorand network given from with one algo then uh, why not to do this right so yeah, well, we'll see. Maybe maybe this 30k is a starting point, and I, I think it's like a parameter you could adjust it if the community votes it again. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, for sure, that that's a good opportunity for people who want to uh, be part of this uh, new network architecture and actively uh, earn rewards that there will be a, a chance uh, to do that. Uh, Ludo, maybe one more question. I, that's actually a question from uh, a community uh, member from Telegram. I've asked people like uh, Ludo will be in the show. What, what uh, questions do you have? So one of the questions was about the uh, A wallet, which is uh, open source wallet. I think you you are the key developer, only developer there. I don't know, but uh, it it provides this. Uh, multi-signature capabilities so kind of multi-sig is like i don't know if other wallets have it so if you're you are the only wallet uh, <laughs> right now with a multi-sig so uh do you see attraction for for this feature i mean uh how how it's being used uh, and uh, bigger question like what's your plan to make this wallet more popular i think it's a good wallet i think it's functional uh, i mean maybe maybe it's missing some ux uh, feature uh but uh, but i think uh, you know you you as a father of of this product uh, should uh kind of uh, push it uh, to the uh, you know push it up to to make it more uh, visible <laughs> it's a good product so maybe let's start with the a wallet a bit like an overview uh, and then also the multi seek and maybe also some ideas if how you see the future of the product yeah so the 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 a wallet, the origins of the a wallet was uh, back like three years ago where there was uh, only one algorand official wallet it was called algorand wallet later renamed to para wallet and it wasn't open source and uh, i tried to write on the algorand forum oh, when they are going where are, when are you going to make it open source i want to help you translate it to slovak language and uh, uh they replied oh we will do it like uh, in one month or in two months or something like this and uh, when there was nothing going on after this deadline then i decided okay let's do like a really simple algorand wallet like a, a, it's basically web to applications because you just interact with the with the apis right so uh, technically i wrote the really simple application where you can list uh, the accounts you can sign transactions and stuff like this and uh, i think even from the origin i uh, added there this uh, multi sig uh, feature and uh, it was because uh, as i uh, see the algorand uh, blockchain or uh, i have this corporate background right and uh, uh, like uh, when i see that the people in the corporations need to do like uh, if, if they would want to step in into the crypto they would need like uh, 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 a good uh, solution to store store their 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 assets, and uh, the um, uh, so they they have basically two things like custodian uh, wallets, like uh, for example the Coinbase can manage them funds, or they have solution like uh, self custody thing, and now with the self custody thing. 
is this one developer going to steal all my funds or not? Like uh, if you have this, uh, if you want to create like, uh, um, uh, I don't know, Bitcoin account, you open the Bitcoin account on, on, on your mobile and uh, uh, you don't have like multi-seek, right? So uh, uh, the person who has access to the, to the private key can anytime basically steal all the funds. And uh, uh, the thing there is that uh, if we want to bring like this corporate uh, corporate uh, security, like, uh, uh, okay, we have the board of uh, uh, directors, uh, let's say nine, nine directors, and uh, we uh, want to be really 100% sure that uh, we are not going to get uh, stolen uh, our funds, then... Uh, let's say half of them has to sign the tra every transaction in in, uh, in this uh, 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 in, in the blockchain and the, like algorand has this feature uh, uh, basically implemented from day one to my knowledge uh, so uh, it's it's basically layer one uh, solution so the, you can sign things on algorand like uh, either with a uh, uh, private key or with multi-seek or with a uh, smart contract. So uh, uh, like I, I wondered like why nobody in these official wallets and stuff like this implements this uh, multi-seek. So I, I, and I, I, I needed this multi-seek because uh, for example, in Aramid Bridge, we we needed this multi-sig because it's the multi-sig uh, thing, and uh, uh, with Aramid, the, the whole idea is that we have simple multi-sig account, and person just sends their assets, and someone just monitors this uh, account and uh, signs this payload. So, uh, uh, so, so like to to develop this. First, I need like some wallet that supports the multi-sig. So, uh, uh, yeah. so, so bas basically, uh, uh, this feature was there. Uh, I think I think it was from the start, but uh, I don't recall exactly. And uh, yeah, the the wrecking of the multi-sig was added later with Aramid because. Uh, also, the the thing is that the, uh, you, from time to time you need to change the the uh, people who has ability to sign this multi seek on Algorand. This is called like a rekeying or rekeying, uh, and uh, 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 basically you can even rekey like uh, the standard account to multi seek, multi seek to standard account. Uh, uh, any like standard account to smart contract account, and uh, then the the smart contract must uh, must uh, approve all, all the transaction and stuff like this. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, the multi sig was there from the start, and uh, when we launched the Aramid or build the Aramid, Aramid, uh, uh, we uh, added there the support for the rigging of the multi six as well or uh, also some other uh, features like uh, opt-in with multi sig and stuff like this mm -hmm. and uh yeah i i didn't develop uh, de develop the able by myself uh but i started by myself and uh, later some guy added there the feature uh, for the ledger another guy added there the feature for the wallet connect one and uh, I'm the product owner, so I check the code and uh, 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 optimize the code and uh, stuff stuff like this. But uh, 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 yeah, so the right now the the best best uh, best security you can get is uh, if you have like oh uh, oh uh, yeah the uh, another thing that we have developed. Uh, something called the uh, arc 76 email and password accounts so if you remember your email and you can remember a very long password for a very long time you uh you don't have to remember mnemonic but uh, if you forget it you will uh and uh, 
uh, you, you might uh, lose your funds, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so, so the private uh, but, but keys the, the... are derived derived from email and the password instead of mnemonic, right? That's what you are saying in this approach. No, the, the the idea is that you need like thirty two bytes on Algorand to generate the, the Algorand account, right? And uh, these thirty two bytes, uh, when you use the standard SDKs, so it's taken from your operating system uh, to to give you like this thirty two bytes, and then the Algorand account is uh, created for you. In Ledger, it works like that: that the thirty two bytes are generated in this Ledger, and uh, they will never tell you the the private key. And uh, uh, you can also only sign with uh, it's stored only in the ledger. And uh, uh, the uh, yeah, so the Arc seventy six. Uh, you can uh, it, it's the uh, Arc standard which is already approved, and uh, you basically hash the any any data like one million times and uh, you get these uh, 32 bytes it's specific algorithm which was approved by the algorand uh, 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 security guys and uh, uh, it's uh, it's very strong for generating basically these 32 random bytes from from known set of data However, if you will use it like the uh, the way that your email is, for example, public, and you will set up like a six six or ten, ten bytes long uh, password, then uh, anybody can can crack it uh, very easy because like uh, the brutal force like ten bytes is uh, it's like if you would have like mnemonic not twenty uh, not uh, twenty four or twenty five words. But only, uh, I don't know, six. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, uh, and but but you uh, you can create the password of one hundred bytes long, right? And uh, it's even higher higher security than than this uh, than this uh, 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 random number generator from from your computer, and uh, you can even rem remember it if if. Yeah, if you are wise <laughs> okay but, super yeah. cool I mean, so, yeah. so so the the uh yeah so the the thing is that the uh yeah, and we added there also the thing called the uh, two-factor authentication so uh, all audience is most probably familiar with uh, two-factor where you have in uh, Google Authenticator or Google uh, or Microsoft Authenticator these uh, six g g digits pins, uh, where basically first you you scan some private key with uh, with uh, the phone, and then uh, your your phone can generate these six numbers. Uh, so we created a system where server. Uh, there is a server involved which uh, uh, which uh, uh, signs the transactions for you if you provide the valid pin code so uh, if you want basically the hi highest type of security you you will combine like uh, uh, multi-seq with this uh, two factor uh, uh, or you, you will combine like ledger with these or uh, and you want to do it like self self hosted account you, you will have like ledger because uh ledger even this mnemonic if you uh, if it gets stolen if uh, your mnemonic to the ledger this is for 24 uh oh uh, 24 word uh, mnemonic which uh, if it gets stolen anybody can sign any transactions from any account from your uh from your ledger, right? So uh, if this gets stolen, this is this, this recovery uh, uh, phrase for, yeah. for the- for, for All is the, lost, you must assume you have lost your fund in that case. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, it, it, even if someone steals this uh, from, from your vault and uh, you, uh, you have 
these, uh, for example, password stored somewhere on the computer, uh, like uh, somewhere where people will not expect it to find. And uh, 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 yeah, like it, it can be really anything like uh, even uh, uh, whatever, like uh, yeah, random buys or or yeah. uh, it, it will not be so su suspicious as uh, the mnemonic, right? Because if so someone is looking for to steal the funds, they are going to to search for these uh, mnemonics uh, uh, through your computer. Yeah, yeah. But if they just find some file, they they, they will not suspect uh, that. So uh, if it doesn't, uh, if the name is not called like my private key. Yeah, yeah. So that that's <laughs> actually a smart way, or kind of alternative way to. Uh, yeah, secure so, the yeah, yeah. so that, that's, that's if, you, if you combine in the multi-sig these uh, these uh, w w one way of the random number generator in ledger second uh, in uh, in this arc 76 that you are wise enough to generate this this uh, password then uh, you can basically reach the highest type of uh, the security mm -hmm. yeah and you can make yeah. your password like the uh, Shakespeare poem and uh, nobody will even expect that's your password, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think the same can happen on Bitcoin, like uh, from like mm -hmm. Bitcoin addresses are basically the same thing. You need just this, so I don't know how, how, how many is on Bitcoin, but let's say it's 32 bytes, then uh, from this... Uh, uh, thing you can also generate like Bitcoin address. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I I don't understand why there are no such uh, such standards yet. Like probably the this uh, security guys doesn't trust people can can create secure passwords. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for sure, uh, your A wallet has a huge potential with uh, so many unique features. I think we should make it a bit more popular, and a lot of things which which uh, you are building, Ludo. I think it's 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 fantastic stuff. So, uh, if yeah, anyone also, would... uh, per perhaps in the in the A wallet is one more uh, interesting feature. It's called Shamir Backup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, if you have like Shamir backup option is that you can split the the this thirty two bytes into um it's it's not it shouldn't be called split because uh, like uh, if persons say that uh, you are going to split mnemonic, they might think that okay, we have twenty four words. Uh, I take like first eight, second eight to some other place and third eight to some other place. But it doesn't work this this way. The thing is that uh, it will generate like uh, uh, one mnemonic, second mnemonic, and third mnemonic, and only with the combination of the of these uh, mnemonics and any of these mnemonics, uh, you can uh, recover the the account. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this is that you can pick number of the mnemonics you want to generate and number uh, the recovery threshold so you can have like 10, 10 mnemonics and you can you can have like se seven of them required to to recover uh, the account yeah. so oh uh, yeah yeah but that definitely uh, there is uh, much more things uh, we could be discussing you are involved into so many uh, different uh, projects. Uh, uh, so uh, thank you so much, Ludo, for, for your time uh, today. If anyone would be interested to meet Ludo uh, in person, there will be a chance to meet up in Prague uh, end of May uh, by the day before uh, ETH Prague. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for, for that. Uh, this is uh, the... can, can 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 I add just two, two more uh, things to 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 the thing? So for for first project I would like to to highlight is this uh, ASA Gold project. It's the gold tokenization where we change the narrative of how the reserves are published. So yeah. it's the thing that. Uh, uh, everybody can see the composition of the gold reserves of each gold item to to the late late um, to the microgram, 
and uh, we basically created the on-chain e-shop and uh, like for each gold item is created also the nft so uh, the nft is bought from this uh, on-chain e-shop and there is also secondary nft marketplace and the owner of the nft can uh, take it uh, uh, like re re redeem these uh, gold item to to his uh, home uh, to to his home by post and uh, uh, and so, so the thing is that we created this uh, gold token backed by real gold yeah and i so... think that's a that's a great start for our another uh, meeting uh, where we will definitely digest it uh, in depth i think it deserves to to go into the details so uh i don't want to confuse people with too many to topics in like a, you know one shot so uh let, let's uh, make it like a, you know just an intro of the next episode uh, and i'm sure we'll come back to uh, uh asa gold uh, and you have other projects like uh, biotech uh, we haven't uh, sufficiently discussed uh, probably your other works uh, yeah, so... I, I'm grouping all my projects under one uh, brand name, basically. It's biatech.io. Yeah. And uh, you can find the, there this uh, ASA Gold, Evoli, the uh, Aramid Bridge, uh, Vault Coin, and uh, we are uh, going to launch pretty soon this concentrated liquidity AMM on Algorand. Yes. The, very, very big thing I yes think. yes so uh we <laughs> so... will we'll provide a link uh, to uh this website under the video uh ludo is also uh having a youtube channel you everyday algonaut uh, where you can find as well other material this is streamed there as well like going live and uh yeah, so uh, I think people can find you also on Twitter. So I'll also uh, give a Twitter uh, handle to your account there. And it was my pleasure talking uh, to you, uh, Ludo. And I think we should definitely uh, repeat it uh, sometime soon uh, to cover the remaining parts. Uh, and uh, yep. Thank you so much, uh, and uh, we'll be in uh, touch. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, bye my bye. pleasure.